apologies. I had apologies for lateness from Jennifer uh, Angela. Have you had confirmation that she's a full apology? Um, I think she was unsure of the exact time that she was presenting. So maybe um, if you're okay, we'll start with lateness, but she may not turn up at all. So sure. I'll leave it in your hands. Thanks. All right. Okay. So I think we'll do lateness and um, um, and that way there's some flexibility in that. Uh, I haven't, I don't have anything from Councillor Mahuta or Councillor Hodge. Thank you, Barry. Um, do I have a seconder? Happy to second. Thank you. And all those in favor? I oppose. Gary. Sweet. Um, confirmation of the agenda. Happy to move that, Angela? Yes, happy to move. Barry, second. Oh, sweet. That's passed. Uh, disclosures of interest. Any disclosures of interest with regard to the matter on the agenda or new disclosures? Nope. If not, we'll just um, we'll move on to our one and only item, which is the uh, submission on the natural hazards insurance bill. We have uh, Miffy and Alejandro in the um, chambers. So we don't we're not manning the cameras though. So I don't know if oh there we are. Oh somebody look at you, James, with the nice. All right. Okay. So over to, I'm not sure who's going to present first, but, or, or Tracy, did you want to say anything before we crack yes. into it? Yes, please, uh, Madam Chair, if I could, and apologies for not being in chamber. I'm just jumping between a bunch of meetings, but I am in the building. Um, yeah, Madam Chair, look, I would just like to highlight that it is um, relatively unusual that council would have uh, a point of view on a, a matter um, relating to a natural hazards insurance bill and particularly uh, the operation of the EQC. However, we are aware that um, there is an awful lot happening in the space, um, an awful lot of threads that aren't necessarily being drawn together. And we also know Council's um, high degree of interest in this space. So Alejandro and Miffy have done the work again across the organisation. The submission is a relatively short submission, but we thought it was important for Council um, to have a voice in this forum, uh, noting and really sending the signal to central government that we we are across all the threads and are trying to, to draw them together. So with that, I will pass over to Alejandro. Great. Um, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. Can everyone online hear me well? Or yes, yes. Okay. Um, so I think I'll, I'll take you a little bit as to, uh, like Tracy said, why are we uh, submitting on this? But essentially, this is a review of the EQC Act, and it seeks to replace the Earthquake Commission with a Natural Hazards Insurance or a Natural Hazard Commission in itself. This is part of a result of a public inquiry that followed the um, Christchurch earthquakes and a few other natural hazard events that have occurred in the country. So if you were to kind of follow what it is, I, we outlined this in the background in paragraphs six and seven. And then what the bill is doing is actually implementing several of the recommendations of the public inquiry. Um, the focus we had for our submission was essentially on two things. So one is a risk-based approach and an understanding or a, what we consider to be a better understanding of resilience that goes beyond just bouncing back or rebuilding, which to us seemed to be what came through in the bill. So we're not saying that that is EQC's policy or that that is EQC's at this moment understanding of resilience, because a lot of the documentation they have online suggests otherwise, somehow it did not translate in the bill, and we think it would be a missed opportunity if we didn't highlight that. And then we highlighted this in um, three main forms. So one is amending some of the objectives to include resilience and as seen in a way to reduce risk, which is consistent with the approach that we have 
as part of our 10-year strategy, the Climate Action Roadmap, and the Waikato Regional Policy Statement. And then the other one was to suggest some of these changes based on this risk-based approach and a better understanding of resilience to use insurance pricing as a lever or as a signal to tell people where probably they shouldn't be rebuilding. So we did not advocate for removal of um, the natural hazard insurance cover. We just advocated for an approach that used information and a risk-based approach to graduate the amount of money that somebody could get as a cap on the cover or that somebody should be paying as part of the insurance through the EQC cover. So that is, in essence, what our submission is. Um, and through you, Madam Chair, you've asked me um, in advance of the meeting to um, share an example of how this would look like in practice. So if mm. the bill was implemented, not many changes would be introduced apart from the objectives of the new commission. Uh, everything else would sort of stay the same in, in matters of what EQC covers. So what we've advocated for is a little bit more fine tuning to use those levers. So um, not sure if James can share that map for us or who's, who's presenting. I think I just, I no, I uh, just flick your map through Teams, uh, uh, an image. You're connected? But I'll, I'll, I'll talk when we get to it anyway. But this is um, a, a little map that shows the events that the inquiry, the public inquiry focused on. And one that would be very similar to situations in the Waikato is the Edgecombe case. So the Edgecombe floodings happened in April 2017, and there were a number of claims that were covered by EQC under the land cover. So not quite the buildings, but the land cover, just because of how the system works. Um, the closest in my mind I can think of is Natia. So mm -hmm. what we're saying is if anything similar to what happened in Edgecombe were to happen in, the, in any, anywhere in the country, but for the sake of our example in the region, in Natia, where either there is a breach of the flood protection infrastructure or an overtopping or flooding comes in a way that comes from the other side of the infrastructure, which is part of what happened in, in Edgecombe as well. So it wasn't just flooding as part of the um, failure of the flooding infrastructure, it was also flooding that was occurring in other areas as part of ponding and other natural hazards. Then what we're saying is use the information that you gather, and this is the recommendation that we make, and uh, as an example, uh, this is a page 10 in your agenda package, the recommendation to amend clause 133. And is that the funding and risk management statement must be reviewed by the minister within one year of a major disaster. So in the event of Edgecombe, and if it were to happen in a place in the Waikato, essentially all we're saying is look at what occurred, make an assessment of the risk that will go on after the event, and then you have all this information about claims, cost of rebuilding, which essentially the public inquiry already said. The system is not doing reviews regularly enough, and they recommended a five-year period. What we're saying is five years is good, but you should also look at it in the face of any major event. So then is adjusting the settings after something happens. And in the case of our example, if something were to happen in Natia, then it might not be that we, um, as a system or the EQC system, the Natural Hazard Insurance Commission, says don't rebuild. They could just be saying, if you rebuild here, your insurance premium will go up. And that is in line with what private insurance is already doing. Mm -hmm. But also the cap, on the cover might be reduced because we understand that there might be X number of claims if we allow the same number of houses to stay there. So it's right. fine tuning those, those settings. So by um, asking for that review within a year, um, that's the opportunity to send signals to, to people who had property there that was damaged that you might want to reconsider whether or not this is where you want to rebuild correct you might want to go somewhere else correct right yes um so just i'm trying to get my head around so what we're there's there's a recommendation for differential levies if you will right yes 
So based on the risk assess or risk assessment of a particular location. All right. Yes. So is that if somebody is looking to buy a property, how would they know the respective levy that was applied to their to the property they were considering buying? Is um, that something that I guess what I it seems as though we're trying to send signals, financial signals to people that if you want to buy here or live here or rebuild here, it comes with some financial, uh, um, some additional financial burden because it is considered an at-risk area. So how how does somebody, a potential buyer, know that? Um, to you, Madam Chair, without um, being an insurance expert, I had to do a crash course on EQC covers to write the submission. But uh, in essence, the EQC levy or EQC charges are levied through private insurance. So you pay yeah. that and it shows you exactly what you're paying for. Yeah. And then insurance in itself has got a specific notes on it. So to use an example of a private insurance company that has already started up applying differentiated insurance, uh, Tower Insurance made an announcement, the CEO made an announcement towards the end of last year regarding uh, hazards for flooding and how they were going to look at applying different levies to different, uh, different um, insurance premiums to different properties because of the risk. Mm -hmm. Now, this is always um, noted for um, earthquake insurance. The zoning of different earthquake risks is clearly reflected on insurance policies, and people actually pay more if they are in a highly um, mobile yeah. um, area for, for mm -hmm. geological hazards. Yeah. Yeah. So th it already exists. So I guess we didn't suggest anything further than that point because we considered the insurance industry already has that, and EQC already has it to some extent. Mm -hmm. I've got a question. Thank you. A uh, question around land use change. Um, does the bill or our submission cover any aspect of if through inundation that land, as opposed to structures being rebuilt, um, land now has to change use. Is that raised in any way in either the bill or in our submission? Um, to you, Madam Chair, it is not raised in our submission or the bill um, because of the scope. So the scope of the bill, as Tracy mentioned at the beginning, is an insurance yeah. matter. So it's only covered. We expect that anything that has to do with land use will be picked up through the changes to the RMA that are ongoing. So this is when we talk about the risk-based approach is only seeking consistency with what we see will happen in those acts. Right. But we did not make any mention of, of land use controls just because the scope of the bill is purely Confined, insurance. Yes. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I could just um, reiterate what Alejandro said then, um, Councillor Quayle, as this relates to the insurance industry, they commonly are focused on, as you've said, structures and bits and pieces as opposed to land. We know very well that some of these events may um, inhibit the ability to use the land for the purposes for which it was previously used. And as Alejandro has said, those are measures that will be picked up in uh, the relevant plans. And we've had some signals um, last couple of weeks, definitely, in the media and also through from Ministry for the Environment, um, the need to revisit some parts of the RMA particularly section 106, which relates to the ability to subdivide land in light of the um, full spectrum of what we're trying to do and get our heads around with natural hazards. So land is, is not part of this part of the conversation, but will definitely come up um, in, in many conversations in the future when we are looking at our natural and built environment plans and regional spatial strategies. Thank you. Is there any warrant in us flagging in this submission that we that, that there should be avenue to make those comments in uh, in other um, proposals? I don't know. 
No. No. Um, sorry. Uh, Tracy, you go ahead. Oh, sorry, Madam Chair. Just getting some clarification. So, was that to make comments around the non-use of land and whether that's something to be considered in in this bill, or just making sure that we are highlighting in this submission the connection to the other pieces of legislation? Yeah, I guess I was just. Yeah, uh, no, and, no. yeah I don't know, um, no, Councillor no. Quayle, if that you would like to see that sort of. What I'm picking up is that uh, other streams of work are going to pick up the land use matter. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think as long as that's picked up there, I'm happy. You're yeah. happy to leave it as it is. Right. Councillor Strange. Thank you, Chair. Hey, um, thanks for um, the submission so far. I was just wondering if you could just clarify the difference for me between a major event and a major disaster. Are they used interchangeably or is there a slight um, difference in their definition, please? Um, do you, Madam Chair, uh, do you use interchangeably? Um, in the documentation that was provided as background for this, um, I would suggest maybe if it's left in our submission that I can adjust the warning so we only use one. And is perhaps... Um, Sorry, from memory. Yeah, sorry, there was one more. A hazard, disaster, and event are all used. Yeah. Um, major major disaster is the wording that is um, currently used in EQC guidance, so perhaps we can... We consistency, can I think that would be use good. Use it for consistency. Yeah, consistency would be really good. Thank you. I think, Madam Chair, just to assist, previously um, when this question's been asked, we've had the expired explanation that the hazard is what occurs, the event is what occurs as a result of the hazard <laughs> occurring, and the disaster is the kind of fallout from the event of the hazard. So um, I think there is real benefit in trying to get some clarity and consistency of terminology. Cool. Thank you. Right. Are there any more Questions? So it's sounding to me like that's the only change we're proposing. Is that consistent language through the submission? Uh, can I clarify yes. something? Yeah. Madam Chair? Uh, so I, if I understand correctly, is where we've used major event against where we use major disaster, correct? Um, I assume so. Right. And I think, Alejandro, just on that consistency of terminology, if we can link, Madam Chair, to other statute as well. Um, if the CDMN, Civil Defence Emergency Management Act, and the um, NEMA proposal that's going through uses different terminology to the um, revised act that we're dealing with, there will be more confusion. So I think, Alejandro, if we stretch that terminology out across all acts that deal with natural hazards, events and disasters, that would be beneficial for all of us. All right, and what did, which one did we decide? Disaster or event? Uh, major disaster, I would suggest major disaster because that is the wording that is used on the guidance that is available to everyone. Terrific. All right. So, so am I hearing everybody correctly that that is the only change we would be making to this this submission? All right. Great. I get a thumbs up from Councillor Strange. And I got a nod from Councillor Quayle. So, I think we're in. Um, so, with that, we'll go with we'll do the finalization now. So we'll we'll have clause two which is endorsing the um, submission. Uh, shall we put some, and we'll get rid of three, which is the delegation. We don't need to do that. So we'll, um, we'll amend two to say, uh, what are we saying there? Noting uh, uh, or consistent use of, of terminology. Yeah. Between major assessor and major event. Between major. So, Madam Chair, um, yeah, I think that the
Sorry, I'm just waiting for James to type. Um, I don't know. Do you have words? Can somebody yep. give me some words there? Okay. That Smitty endorses the program. Um, with the amendment to the submission, noting the consistency in the use of terminology. With the amendment to this mission. Noting the need. Uh, yep. The need to use consistent terminology. Terminology. Use, use with an E. Use, use. use terminology. All right. We all good consistent. with that? Yeah, consistent terminology, sorry. Uh, in regard to events and just slash disaster. I'm, I'm just being a bit particularly, Madam Chair, noting that we, uh, the minutes of the meetings now will rely on the recommendations more than the discussion as we've had previous. Right. It's a DIS. It is DIS. A. S. A disaster. I don't know how you spell disaster. <laughs> There we go. It comes up. Eventually we there. It's a disaster. Sorry, Kevin. spelling. Consistence to consistent. T. Thank you. This tent. Yep. That's it. Nice. All right. Would you like to move that, Councillor Quayle? Would you like to second that, Councillor Strange? Yes, I would. Thank you. So all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Sweet. That's the end of the meeting. Knocked it out. It's 10 to 2. My, we're efficient. Yes. Awesome. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thank you, um, Alejandro and Miffy, for joining us today and, and, uh, and the crash course that you took in insurance.